Hey, this is Rick, and uh, welcome to uh, episode three, I believe it is, of uh, Guitar Hacker Channel. And uh, <clears throat> in a previous video, I think the first one I, I did, I showed you how to build a Marshall tone, but I didn't really go into a lot of the details that I want to go into. So basically what I decided to do is to uh, do a series on on this, on how to build your perfect, uh, basically the best sounding uh, guitar tone that you possibly can uh, using one of these uh, amp sims. 98% of the people that have these either don't understand how to use them properly or are using them improperly. Um, if that makes any sense, they, they uh, do an excellent job of reproducing everything that they're supposed to reproduce and they do sound incredible, but if there's certain things that you have off, you're just not going to get the sound you want. I know when I first started using these things, this TH3, I hated it. I couldn't figure out what was going on. And uh, it just sounded like crap, but I got it figured out. And the first tip that I want to give you, the very first thing you need to do, as you can see here, we have a blank screen with uh, just a TH3 interface up. Let me just make sure we have a, a blank signal here. Yeah, we have the guitar signal going through. But all these things have an input level and an output level. And of course, you also have an input uh, on your um, audio interface going in your computer. The first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you have uh, the level set on your uh, preamp going into this thing. And a good place to start is 50%. And a lot of people adjust these things to where they you know, they just see like mostly green but then it clips into the orange. You don't ever want it to turn orange, red, yellow. You don't ever want it to get out of the green range, period. Because uh, what you're going to do is you're going to create digital distortion in the signal. And that digital distortion that you create is going to it's just going to make it sound funny and fuzzy and hollow. It's it's just not going to make it sound as good as it possibly can. So on this particular one, they all have input and output levels. But if you look up here in the left-hand corner, um, you'll see the uh, the level bars come up when I hit a, a chord or a note. And even that's a little hot, so I'm going to back this off. You saw there how it clipped on that. But the first thing that I want you to do is is this particular guitar, this Les Paul I'm using, has really hot pickups, so I'm going to probably have to back it off. But tip number one, take a look at your interface, and if it's an XLR and a quarter-inch interface, one of those deals where it's both jacks combined, make sure that you have the switch on instrument and not on line level. Line level is if you're recording like a drum machine or something like that. You, you want to make sure if you're using an instrument and a guitar, you want to, you want to leave that on the... Uh, instrument signal that's very important it's easy to, to screw up and get that wrong so that's the very first important step the second step is you want to look at your input level on the, the actual interface itself do not go out of the green don't even attempt to go into the orange you want to stay out of it it's going to do you so much more uh, benefits for your tone quality later but let's check this meter once again and even that's a little still a little hot so i'm going to back it off i don't like to see this any higher than 50 percent 60 percent for me is pushing it that there is even slightly pushing it but what you want to do is you want to chunk down on your lower strings as hard as you're going to do it and you want to set your level that way that i guess we can get away with okay now if you look over here on your right hand side of your of uh excuse me your screen you'll see the output uh knob on this particular uh amp sim some of them are in, in different locations just find out wherever yours is and find the knob and you usually want to crank that back to around 60 percent you don't want it much higher than that for the same reason digital distortion and, and a, a side note on these uh amp sims these things are uh, actually designed and optimized to, for the best sound quality at minus 18 decibels on the uh on the mixer so that's another thing people don't understand these things don't have to run hot to uh get a really good sound out of them so let's go ahead and look at our output signal over here on the right uh, let me get this mouse out of your way here so you can see it see how we're hitting 50 60 percent right there on the inputs and the outs we're basically about the same but at no time does it fart out i did see a little little clip there at the beginning of uh on the inputs let me back it off here a second man still let me back it off just a little bit more all right there now we're not clipping at all on the input over there and we're coming up right around 50 percent, which is exactly what you want now bear in mind when we pull in the amp 
and uh, we start making adjustments. We're going to have to um, possibly adjust levels, and uh, I'll teach you how to do that later. So step number one, check your interface. Make sure it's on instrument. Make sure your level never pops into the yellow or the red or the orange, whatever color it is. You never want it out of the green. Check your input levels coming in up at the top left. 50% is ideal. 60 is okay, but you don't want to go much higher. And on the output side, same thing over here on the right-hand top. Uh, we're right about 50%, so that's about perfect. So let's go ahead and move into the next step. All right, let's move into the next step. Now, I want to give you another important tip, too. And this, this will save you so much time and so much hassle and so much headache and so much doctoring um, later on. If you know what tone you're going for, um, like if you're going for a, a thrashy, like a metal tone, of course, you know, you want to use your, uh, your, your diesel amps, your uh, Mesa boogies, that kind of thing. If you're going for a martial tone, you probably want to use... Uh, like the Divi Marks or uh, probably um, the one I like to use, which is the Randalls. And I've never played a, a real Randall amp in my life, but there's a there's one amp in here that I really like. And uh, what we're going to be going for in this particular one, and I am going to do a clean tone too, probably in the next video. But um, what I'm going to go for is just like a, for lack of a better word, I know everybody has their different versions of, of uh genres of music but I'm going to use like a rock and roll tone more like a I don't want to say like a 70s tone more of a 70s slash 80s tone like a sort of like a Guns N' Roses I guess Marshall kind of tone like you're uh you're just throaty Marshall kind of tone but if you know right 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 away what kind of tone you're going for um it, it's common sense it may seem like but it, it's really not most people what they'll do is they'll pull one amp in and they'll try and put a pedal in front of it or something to get it to sound like it. What you need to do is take a little time and go down through all the amp options that are available to you and pick the one that's right out of the box, the closest uh, gain and tone that, you're, that you want. So what we're going to do first, and this program's kind of helpful and kind of weird at the same time, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull um, this Randall Boost head in, and it's going to ask me, and most of them probably do this, I think. They're going to ask you if you want a matching cabinet. And you're going to hit no, and I'm going to tell you why here in a couple seconds. So we're going to hit no. So this will just give us the uh, the basic Randall uh, distortion. And it's going to sound strange and tingy because there's no cabinet behind it. But let's just make sure we have a signal here. And let's make sure that it didn't uh, affect our levels too much. So... Uh <laughs> Yeah, that does sound pretty weird, doesn't it? Okay, so we are getting signal into it, and as you notice, I want you to look at the controls. I want you to leave the controls alone. Don't touch them. Don't do anything with the controls as of yet. The only thing I'm going to do with this is I might bump the gain up just a little bit, and... What you want to do now is you want to look up above and you want to check your levels. Okay, we're still good on the levels. So, now what I want you to do is, the reason why we left the cabinet out is, uh, I'm going to show you some uh, tricks here on how to just really, the devil's in the details in these things. Um, just, you'd be surprised what little minute, minor adjustments and uh, little switches will do for your tone. And uh, the normal person that uses one of these things They'll come in, they'll either use the stock cabinet that goes with the head and just assume that that's what they have to use and that's going to be the best sounding cabinet that goes, no, 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 no. This is music, this is creativity, and you would not believe the difference in variations of sounds you can get just by trying out different combos. And when I was coming up, I had a Marshall amp. That's it. If I could play any, you know, if I could have my choice of, uh, I don't even know what they have in this thing, 50 different guitar amps and... uh 50 different cabinets and everything just right at my disposal without having to connect anything or I mean we had to use pedal boards and uh Marshall heads cabinets we had to lug that shit around and uh I don't miss those days by the way but anyhow I'm getting a little ahead of myself but so we have the, the tone here we're going for a 30 tone so now what I want you to do is here's where the it's really going to get interesting down here in the, in the left-hand corner on this TH3 program, there's actually what they call a, it's a mixer, for lack of a better word. It's actually a splitter and a mixer put together. And we're going to use this 
to uh, dial in a really interesting cabinet tone. But the first thing I want you to do is, is once you pull this mixer in, make sure that the, the, the bandpass switch is selected off. Don't put it on normal. Don't do anything. All this is going to do is split the signal. And this is going to be your blend right here. So you want the blend in the center for right now. Because if you, if you touch anything else in this, it's going to bring in these frequency spreads and all that. And it's just going to confuse you. So leave that out for now. So since I'm going for a 30 uh, rock tune, but I happen to like a lot of bottom end. And uh, just like a... I just like a fullness to the bottom end. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm gonna, we're going to go into cabinets here. And uh, I'm going to find one... I'm going to go with this old 412 green based on an old Marshall cabinet. So now when I play this, as you can tell, I have the head going into the mixer. Or I'm sorry, the splitter. We're sending this cabinet signal through the top and then we're out through the, uh, the mixer at the end. Splitter first, mixer at the end. So now if I hit a couple, if I hit a, a chord here. <laughs> Okay, you hear how the sound got instantly better, and but it's still got that tinge to it. The reason for that is, is up top, we're going through an actual guitar cabinet and out to your headphones or your speakers. Down the bottom, we're not. We still have a raw signal. And you're probably asking at this point, well, why would you want to do that, Pat? Well, here's why you want to do that. I already know from years of experience and from using these, uh, for using the real cabinets and from using these um, amp sims, that a 412 cabinet is going to give you a lot more bottom end. It's going to be more of a, a full, robust, probably anywhere from a thousand on down. It's going to give you a lot more oomph than like a smaller 112 or a 212 cabinet will do. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to attempt to uh, go through here and I'm going to grab a 112 probably. And I'm going to throw the 112 on the bottom of this stack and we're going to mix those two cabinets together. But I'm not going to bore you with my cabinet selection because uh, I'll bore you to tears because there's so many cabinets here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just grab one and uh, pull it in. When, when you're doing this on your own, just by all means, just you know, have a little patience and just get down through and experiment and uh, see what sounds best for you. But for this particular purpose, I'm going to pull in this 112 Randall down at the bottom. So if we look here, we have these cabinets. If we push all the way up to the top, you're only going to hear this uh, 412 cabinet. Let me grab this pick here once. Okay. Now, if I pull this down to the bottom. You hear how that adds like the top end and, and a little bit more mid-range to it. So when we have it in the center, we're getting the perfect blend between the two. Now... Um, there's the perfect blend between the two. You hear how we have that beefy bottom end? And we just have that uh, right amount of top end. Let's just pull it down. I want to get a little bit more top end here. Maybe just a little bit more. Okay. Okay. That's uh, close to what we're looking for. Now, now that we have that, I want you to, this is very important, I want you to do this also. And uh, this kind of freaked me out when I first uh, picked up on this, but well, not this particular part, but the next part I'm gonna tell you. I want you to right click on the microphone or however you do it in, in the particular amp sim that you're using. Come down, grab an American 57, change it to an American 57. Every great guitar tone on earth has been recorded with a um, SM57. So let's go ahead and do that, and let's take a listen. I mean, I had to guess it would help if I turned the guitar on, huh? Okay, so we got... We got our SM57s in here now. This is uh, where it gets really fun. And almost no one does this with these, and I never did it myself either until uh, I got bored one night and I was messing around with it. But what I want you to do now is, uh, however, if you don't know how to do this, with, if you're using a different amp sim, just uh, look in the literature, it'll tell you how to do this. But this uh, particular TH3 version has uh, an option for two microphones per cabinet. 
and you will not believe the difference in the uh, sound that this makes. But I'll tell you what, before we do that, now that we got this gain stage dialed in here, let me come back here. We're going to hit the master, and we're going to turn up the noise gate to, uh, let me turn the volume on here. Let me get all the way down. Okay, you hear that noise? We're going to turn this up just till the noise disappears and stop. You don't want to go any further. If you go too far, you're going to cut off uh, some of your, t um, your notes when you're bending and so forth. Okay, you hear how that's just sounding better already? Okay, so now we have our two SM57s here. What we're going to do now is what almost no one does with these is we're going to go ahead, we're going to right click on it, we're going to select properties. And if you look here, you have mic B and mic A. Mic A is this first mic right here. What we're going to do is we're going to take mic B and we're going to basically turn it on and we're going to bring it up to zero decibels uh, just like this mic here. But this particular mic, we're going to change to an SM58, an American 58. And just a little history lesson, the difference between an SM58 and a 57 is nothing except the uh, actual screen that's on it and the way the screen is fashioned. And what that does is it uh, rejects certain frequencies. At a cer it just gives it a different timbre is the easiest way to describe it. So it just adds a little color to it. So now we're going to come down to our bottom cabinet and we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to select an SM58. And now that we have, uh, let me see here. Let's, let, let me select properties. And we're going to have to go in and we're going to have to turn this up to uh, zero decibels. Okay, let me grab the pick here and uh, let's see what this sounds like. We're going to A-B this. I want to show you what this does. Okay, now that's, we, were, we have two mics on. Now watch what happens. I'm going to pull this all the way back. I'm going to turn that out of the way here. Let's go up to this one. Let's hit properties. Let's pull that all the way back. And uh, let me play another chord. Okay, now that's without two mics. This is with two mics. And when I turn uh, the two mics on down here, let's do the other one too. Let's go to properties. I think I turned this one off. Yeah, I did. Let's turn this up the whole way. There we go. So now we have um, we have two different cabinets with two different tonal characteristics that I went ahead and blended with the splitter here. I have two different microphones that are technically the same, but they do give different tonal characteristics because of the uh, windscreen and the foam that's inside of them. So let's take another listen to a full G. There's a D. It just adds so much to your sound if you add that second mic. And just for this particular purpose right now, I'm not even going to mess with the location of the mic. These particular mics, if, if you right click on it, you can pull it away. You can pull, change the distance from the speaker. And uh, if you go this way, you can put it right in front of the cone, which is where I prefer it. But let's move it over here once. Let's see what we can do. You hear how that just that little movement of the mic changed the tone? So what you want to do when you're doing this is just experiment with your mic positions I reckon I don't recommend that you you change the distance from the cabinet because it just it, it adds a weird phasing effect to it and it doesn't really sound that well. But if you if you move them back and forth, um, if I can grab the microphone, if you move them this way and up and down and so forth, it, it it'll give you a much better guitar tone than it will moving them in and out. That's just from my personal experience. So. Uh, <laughs> And I don't really like, we're getting a little bit too much noise. So what I want to do is, let me come back. I just want to bring the level back just a little bit. Let's hit the master. Let's bring this up. It's just quite, not cutting it off just as quite as I like. Uh, still not quite there. 
Okay. That's good enough for me for right now. Okay, so we have our head. We have our splitter. We have our cabinets. Now, before we get out of this particular video, this is only part one. We're, we're just starting to have some fun here. What I want to do now, uh, in the next video, we're going to get it into EQ. I'm going to show you some cool EQ hacks that uh, I actually picked up by mistake when I was a kid. It's pretty tripped out. But um, right now, no uh, tone would be complete. Or excuse me, no basic tone would be complete without uh, a little bit of reverb. So let me grab the reverb here. Where are we at? There we go. And I always like to use hall reverbs. And the reason for that is I find that the uh, the plate and the room reverbs just, they don't have enough ass end on them or enough tail. And they just, it just sounds artificial to me. That could be just the way they're, they're represented in this particular program. But for the most part, I like to use hall. So let's, now that we have hall reverb on it, let's take a listen. <laughs> how that hall just fills the whole thing out okay now I can't get out of this first uh, episode of uh, getting your perfect guitar tone without giving you one of my secret hacks that I love I've been doing this for years I did this when I was a kid and uh, when I was in my first band came across it by mistake but TH3 actually has they didn't have this pedal when I was a kid and I'm kind of pissed off about it to tell you the truth but let's go in here. This is going to make an amazing difference. They have a pedal. It's called a Dimension. And it's, it's supposed to be a chorus pedal. It's, it's not really a chorus pedal. Um, when I pull this in, what this is going to do, if you ever s listen to uh, Ozzy Osbourne's voice on Speak of the Devil, it sounds so thick and it's so in your face and it's, and it's, so, uh, it's just so full. It's because they have some kind of a a doubling effect on it and what what this is going to do is basically going to do the same thing for your guitar tone so we're going to pull this uh and you always want to pull this in the front and from experience and just from years of doing this uh i found i find personally that all all of your modulation effects always sound better going into the amp head be, rather than being after and the reason for that is is it's a clean chorus going into the head, then the head distorts the signal, and then it's out. Whereas if you have the chorus pedal after the uh, head, you're going to have distortion before it hits the pedal, and it's just going to color it, and it's not going to sound as pure as it should. But anyhow, listen to what this does, and uh, hope if you have a set of headphones on, it's really going to stand out, but it's also going to stand out uh, when you, with a set of speakers. But let me go ahead and turn this off, and uh, let me play it. Uh, a couple chords. Okay, now let's go ahead and hit the chorus. And uh, let's, let's listen to what the doubling effect does. Let me just hit a plain open G. And then we'll hit a D. So let's back to back. Let's listen to what this sounds like. Let's turn this off, and let me find my pick again. Here we go. Let's listen to it with it off. Okay, on again. It just adds an extra oomph and an extra thickness to it. It just makes the sound so much better without actually giving it a chorusy sound. So, so far, up to this point, 
we've been working on uh, the perfect guitar tone. Well, the perfect, what I consider my perfect guitar tone. You can uh, obviously come up with yours. This is the whole point of the video. But what we're going to do in the next video, which is going to be part two, is we're going to be introducing EQ. And I'm going to show you a really cool EQ hack that most guitar players don't know about and don't do. It just adds some real f uh, f oomph and fatness to it. And we're also going to be adding uh, a delay. And we're probably going to play with the chorus too, just to give you an idea of what the way the chorus should be used when you're using these things. But once again, thanks for watching this video. And uh, I will probably, when I'm not as lazy as I am right now, I'll actually download this and put this file below the video so you can actually download this as a basis. But I encourage you to do this on your own and experiment with different things. But thanks for watching part one and look for part two where we, we build upon this and uh, give you more pointers and uh, get you sounding as good as you possibly can on your PC with uh, an amp sim. This is Pat. This is Guitar Hacker. Thanks for watching. Over and out.